Everyone's good? Cool. Hello. One, two, three, four. Uh, six, seven. <laughs> good. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for day three, the first session. Uh, I'm joined today by probably two of the best dressed gentlemen in the whole show. So thank you very much for joining us, Sebastian and Hendrik from Airy. Uh, we're looking at the new Airy Alexa Mini updates, as well as some new wireless accessories and updates to the WCU4 platform. So of course, first and foremost, the supplemental update packet, or SUP as we call it, 4, was just released. And with that comes a bunch of new goodies, including Airy Raw internal to the CFast cards, as well as 4.3 in open gate mode with that as well. So for my, you know, we know that this is a slightly different variant of the Airy Raw. It's still the same look and everything, all same information, but you're you're packaging it differently, is that correct? That is correct. We are packaging the raw format onto the CFAS card mm -hmm. and they require a different approach. We're not using the Vitrify system this time. We are using an MXF wrapper, which results in a different workflow after capture. It requires an unwrapping right. into the .eri file with the post-production tool. We, we supply the ARC, the Arial Converter, which is a very basic application, but software providers such as Resolve Colorfront and others are in the process of releasing updates to their platform to handle this MXF file format. So native native support is coming. Correct. Course, right. But in the meantime, you'll have a software package that unwraps it into standard ARI files. That is correct. Okay, great. And it's uh, internal, of course, to 30 frames. Uh, correct. In four. arrow mode, it records the entire open gate area. Right. You can select different geometries, 185, 43, and amorphic, but it still records the entire format and it puts into the metadata fields the aspect ratio that you wish to extract when you'll do the transcoding. Great, right. so that's very, uh, and again, it's you know obviously Aerie Raw has been used for productions of all sorts, uh, and it's a very comfortable format for, for everyone that's using it. So, let me take a look at the menus real quick, I guess. I mean, that's something that's uh, one of the big benefits of shooting on these cameras, it's very easy to set up and initialize. So, can you just walk us through very quickly, it's sort of that Very intuitive the interface, Yep. recording, lets you select the flavor of codec you wish to apply, ProRes 444, XQ, or Ari Raw. Confirm the change. It loads up a new sensor calibration. Right. Optimize for that geometry. And then beneath that, you have a choice of resolutions. 16 by 9, 2.8K, open gate 3.4K, and within the 3.4K open gate, various geometries for different um, lens choices, essentially. Okay, great. So, of course, anamorphic is in there as you see that, right? Correct. So you can do anamorphic recording the squeezed image, mm -hmm. or you can record the anamorphic image de squeezed in either 2048 pixel 2K or in HD center extraction, common top. Okay, so like an HD center crop. Like center crop. Right. The benefit is that it expands the frame rate capabilities. In 4 3 mode, you're limited in the HD to 50 frames per second, and in the anamorphic HD de-squeeze mode and 2K, you reach 150 frames per second. 150 frames, internal. Correct. Right, that's great. And of course, support for the external area raw flavor is coming soon, I understand. Yeah? That is correct. Right. Um, we received yesterday from um, Da Vinci a new version of Resolve that supports it, yes. Great, fantastic. Uh, you know, and one of the big things, of course, about the camera is how it's configured. It's very modular. Uh, one of my favorite facts about this is that the lens mount it's actually equidistant from top and bottom. So right. although it may have the Airy logo upside down and a right side up, it yeah. doesn't really matter because the system, of course, is in terms of your accessories, it's your rod mounts, and everything. Particularly is, helpful yeah. in a gimbal situation where right. you're about, you're, it enables you to use a very big lens such as a Master Prime 12 mil and still be able to balance the camera perfectly onto the right. gimbal. Right, great. And actually with that, we're looking at a brand new low profile. This is a VCT or sort of ENG style shoulder pad. Yes. Correct. Right, so a little bit lower profile, it, it still offers that adjustability. And it mimics the Amira camera. It allows yeah. you to balance the camera payload over your head right. during so lens changes. Right. And we also bring a new low profile shoulder pad to bring the optical axis closer to your, your shoulder. Okay, so lowers the center of gravity. Correct. Right. Makes it a little bit uh, perhaps easier to hold on a long shoot. All right, great. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, you know, one of the big things too, of course, is the uh, you can use the Amira style viewfinder that we've all come to use and, and love, the LCD with an OLED display. But you can also use the Transvideo. Uh, that is correct. And as, well. as you before, we have expanded the control capabilities of the Starlight monitor. Right. We have the magnify capability, and we also have now the ability to start trigger for recording on off. Right. There you go. In center, playback. 
frame rate, shutter angle, exposure index, neutral densities, and white balance, as well as controlling user buttons. So you can okay. configure user buttons to format a card, for example, and okay. trigger that from the transfer to a starlight monitor. So how many user buttons are in that new interface? Three, Three user buttons. Three user buttons. Wow, that's great. So now, of course, you have sort of that familiar workflow uh, for the assistant or for the operator. Correct. Right. Oh, that's great. And we. I mean, this has obviously been a great monitor we love, and it has a built-in uh, SD card slot to record proxy files as well. That's so, correct. Right. So you have your main recording in here on the CFast cards, and also yeah. a proxy file. You can automate right. recording in the monitor while the camera is running, but you can also use the monitor to record rehearsals and things like that. Okay. Also, oh, when you trigger the camera, it'll automatically correct. trigger the. It the has a red light. flag in the HDSDI. Great. Correct. So of course, file names, time code, all that stuff is carried over. So it makes it very easy for an online, offline edit. It situation. is now embedded into the metadata. It wasn't earlier. It is now. Okay. Great. Yeah. So that's a good update. And then one of the best things too is it's just a very simple two cable configuration. Um, you know, SDI for signal and control, and also power. Power and data. And that data. Is oh, sorry, data the is on that port. The triggers. Great. Great. And uh, you know we're looking at this too. You see all these new uh, motors on it, and uh, so looking at this, of course, the one of the best features was being able to use a single output using the LBUS protocol to control up to three motors. Right? Exactly, that's right. You know, the Alexa Mini was designed in a way that's really a small camera, mm -hmm. and since it's so small, we really had limitations in putting many connectors because there was no space to put an individual connector for focus iris and zoom. So we put one bus connector here, uh, we call it the L-Bus on the lens mount, and from there we can daisy chain up to three motors. Right. Yeah. Um, initially, the Alexa Mini was really designed to make be, be a very small and lightweight camera, particularly for drone applications or gimbal applications, so the size and weight really mattered. Right. But now we see that it's really very often also used in the studio setups, with a bigger zoom lens, you know, bigger lenses with a bigger diameter, you need really speed to move that in a considerable amount of time. Um, and even though the CFOS Mini motors are, are very fast motors and for the size really good motors, um, you might run into limitations if you have a really big lens. So for this reason, we bought the CFOS Plus motor. You see it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a bit larger, but it's much more fast and powerful. So let me present that to you quickly. Sure. And this is just daisy chain. For those that can't see this, I mean, you see that everything's connected via this one signal path. So focus iris or zoom motors are linked together. Right? Yeah, Makes exactly. That's a very, very exciting easy. thing. And there's one thing in the daisy chain I will talk later about. But yeah. you see, really, that's coming from the mount to that little box, which I, I'll talk in a minute. And then from one motor to the next motor to the next motor. Right. And the order of the motor really doesn't matter if you put the big motor uh, um, in, in the first position or second position or th third position, the, the order of it really doesn't matter. Right. So now if you see, you can really move um, the lens pair very fast. I, I think right. it's really one of the fastest motors in the market right now. Right. Um, so this is called the C-Force Plus? Yes. Right. And the original motors are called the C-Force Mini? Yes, the okay. C-Force Mini because they are mini, right. they are small, and C-Force Plus because they really have a plus on speed and also torque. Right, right, yeah. that's great. Um, you see here on the motor, you see the letters F, I, Z. That is for focus, iris, and zoom. Because since you're daisy-chaining the motors, you have to tell the motor which axis it's on. Right. If you're on the traditional camera with the focus, iris, zoom connector, it would be clear that the focus motor on the, fo on the focus scale of the lens uh, is connected to the focus connector. But in that case, since they are in one chain, um, you have to tell them what they are. So you right. if you press it, that button here, you see what they're configured. It. So this is for the F, for the right. f is fitting on the focus scale. This is on, on the zoom scale, this is on the iris. And if you want to reconfigure, you would just press that button again and toggle it through the letters and configure it that way. Right. That's great. And that obviously syncs up automatically with the WCU, so uh, WCU four rather. So when you're using the focus motor in this position, the hand wheel corresponds to that exactly. automatically. Exactly. So if I tell you this one, you you are the focus, yeah. and I turn the focus knob, and the focus motor is turning. Right. And that makes it very easy for setup. Yeah. And very streamlined, which is great. Exactly. So and here you are just assign the axis on the motor. That's important. You have to do that on the motor. Right. But through the handset, you can assign. Uh, you can control the torque, and so the di direction of right. the motor. Right. So now you did mention this little new box, right, which I think you've called the cube affectionately, but it, it is got an acronym yeah. on it, DCM. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we, we always have to, to find names that somehow speak for the product. And, and we could also, since we are in Vegas here, we, we should have called it the DICE. Yeah. It was also an idea. 
But we called it the cube because it looked like a little cube, and it's yeah. a L cube because it's it has to do with the L bus protocol. Mm. That little guy is actually a protocol converter, so it converts a serial protocol like RS232 to the L bus protocol, which is the ARI uh, internal REC motion internal mm. um, bus um, system. Um, so what it, it, that's a really a very small guy, but it's 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 a very important piece in the whole thing. You know, the smallest things sometimes are the most important ones. Right. If you miss a cable, it's very small, but you cannot run the whole camera with this. It adds much benefit to the whole system. Previously, it was not possible to attach uh, ultrasonic distance measure like the UDM1. Here we have it on the camera, right. or also a cine tape, for example, sure. through the Alexa Mini camera. People wanted to do that and requested that they knew that feature from the Alexa Plus or the Universal Motor Controller UMC4, right. where you could attach an ultrasonic distance measure on this camera device and then get the readout, distance readout on the WCU4 handset. Right. So of course we're looking yeah. at the display here. Uh, it's not active now, but yeah, because now it's it's, it's, it's very mode. far. Oh, right, if you sure. put your hand like a, like a meter away, right, you get it a is, readout. Right. So we get that same readout now on the handset and that can right. be very useful if you don't really see the display on the camera or you want a very lightweight s uh, configuration right. uh, you can just have the readout on the handset you al always see it and with the UDM1 we have uh, the case that all the intelligence of this tool is in the horns we say the brain is on the horns <laughs> yeah um, so you, you have this horns or the sensor unit yeah. and you can use it standalone in this case, we have the display unit as well, but you don't really need it. You can just uh, use the sensor unit alone and attach it to the L-Cube. Uh, by the way, this is one is called the L-Cube CUB1. The L-Cube is a new family of products. We will okay. launch other product, other L-Cubes in, in the future as well. This is the CUB1. Um, well, and it converts uh, it to... Right, so it converts that protocol over so the two sort of systems can, can are married and can talk to each other. Yeah. And so that's only one function of the L-Cube. In future, it'll have a lot of other functions. Right. So could L be LDA support, perhaps? Or right. It could be, for example, it could be a, a range extender um, for, for L-Bus cables. L-Bus oh, cables, it's a, it's a CAN bus uh, protocol running on, have limitations in length. So you could use two of those L-Cubes to, to bridge a longer distance, for example. Sure. And we have many other ideas for right. that. So, so that little, little guy is, all, is very mighty. Yeah. Great. So you have a lot of little things cooking up in the labs back uh, at the uh, always. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So actually, that's interesting. You mentioned that the brains are basically in the, the horns, the yeah. measurement device. So in terms of setting the offsets, right, because obviously position of the horns relative to the focal plane. Uh, exactly. Central that's plane what is you different. want to do. You right. want to so measure. Without this, how would I set up the sort of distance? That's what you need it for. Okay. That's what you need it for. But Got once it's done, you then you it. can unplug it. Right. So plug yeah. it in temporarily, set the offsets, yeah. make yeah. sure everything's reading right, unplug it, go lightweight. Yeah. And you get all that information in the handset for, exactly. the, for the assistant uh, exactly. camera. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Um, again, so very simple, very streamlined, which we love about this system. Uh, is there anything new that's coming that uh, outside of the little cube that uh, well, you There's can one share with new us? thing which Sebastian didn't uh, talk about yet about the SUP4 uh, for yeah. the Alexa Mini camera, and that is uh, uh, support for the Lens Data Archive. Ah, yes. You know, the, Len the Alexa Mini camera um, uh, comes with the LDS mount. Right. So if you have a uh, LDS lens, and LDS stands for Lens Data System, for the ARI Lens Data System. Right. Um, if you have a LDS lens with those uh, lens contacts and uh, internal encoders, and you attach it to Alexa Mini, you would get instantly the lens data. Great. Lens data is good basically for four different things. First of all, you get the lens data display on your handset. So right. when you're in a, in a situation where you don't see your lens because it's somewhere where you can't see it or it's a very small lens and there's very small marks and you can't really see it from a distance. See the lens data display very comfortably on right. your WC4 handset. Okay. The first benefit. The second benefit is that you can map a lens scale such as the focus scale uh, to the um, to a pre mark focus ring. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we offer five different pre mark focus rings. The, the advantage of this is that you can use one or two focus rings maybe for, for you know you can map any lens to one focus ring basically right. so when you change a lens you don't necessarily have to change the focus ring so you're getting more used to, uh, to the physical um, um, motion of the, of the, of the ring right. get, get really more confident right that's great the third benefit uh, is the focus tracking that uh, has something to do with the UDM1 or Cinetape so you would get the distance measure 
to your handset, the distance me measurement, and once you press a, a, a button we have here, okay. the focus motor will drive to the measured value. Now you might wonder, what is, there, is that good for? Of course, it's not meant to replace the focus puller, right. but it's very useful if, for example, you are a your focus puller, you're already focused on the talent, you're already set, yeah? Camera's rolling, what happens? Slate comes into the picture. Right. So you would have to turn your knob again, focus on the slate, and then turn back to the actor and there's really right. no time. Now with the focus tracking, you could just already focus on the actor. The slate comes in, you just press that button, it automatically focus on the slate. And you release the button, it goes back the focus mode just goes back to where your right. your focus ring is. So in some ways it's almost like a one push autofocus, sort of a temporary or maybe just a, a quick punch in like yes, you said. Yeah. Okay. And, so and it happens in every medium. scene, so it's a very right. useful small little, yeah, and little very thing. fast. And the last benefit is, of course, lens data for post-production. So with SUP4, we can also record the lens data with the images. Right. And that can be very helpful for, especially VFX post-production, right. if you know which lens was used, how was it set for right. every individual frame. Right, so focal length, iris information, uh, yeah. all comes across. Yeah. Uh, so now this was previously only possible with the Alexa Mini if you have a, had a, a LDS lens. But right. now, since we included the lens data archive, it's possible with any lens. The lens data archive includes a set of pre-programmed lens files for every lens ARRI offers, or every ARRI type lens. Mm -hmm. So all the ultra primes, Allura zooms, it's already in there, and you can just select it right. and get your lens data immediately. In the case that you get a lens that's not yet in there, maybe an old vintage lens or whatever, exotic lens, you can program that lens file through your handset. Right. Maybe you did that already for an Alexa Plus camera or UMC4, then load it into the Alexa Mini, activate it, and then you also get your lens data. Oh, great. So you don't need to reprogram it because it's already in the LDA. Yeah, the so archive. for the ARRI lens, it's, it's already in. For all the other, lens, other lenses, you, you program it once. When you did that, you have a file for that lens. Whenever you get that lens again into your hands, just take your file, load it into the camera, and then you get your lens data. Yeah, very great. So we're obviously excited and looking forward to more updates. And I know this is an ever you know, evolving product. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure there'll be a lot more surprises, maybe come IBC. But uh, again, thank you so much, Hendrik and Sebastian, for joining us today. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us as well. You know, They'll be around for a few minutes. If you have any questions, please join us. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.